This is Olivia. She's a fashion photographer, a content creator, and a podcaster. A Swiss native, she now lives in Falmouth, Cornwall, with her boyfriend Tom and dog Milo. Her photography is mostly inspired by the great outdoors and has been described as fresh, calming, and romantic. She is just as comfortable shooting a fashion collection in the wild outdoors as she is shooting a small and intimate editorial in the studio. She's worked with a range of clothing brands throughout the UK, including Barber, Jules, White Stuff, Sea Salt, helping them grow their audiences, sell their products and inspire their followers. When she's not out taking pictures, you'll find her writing, photography, marketing, lifestyle content for her weekly blog, or recording business advice for her latest podcast. In her time off, she enjoys walking her dog, reading books, magazines, and exploring places with friends. Her most recent adventure being on an African safari. chat about how she started, what motivates her, and how she manages her content schedule. This is episode 8, I'm Mel Chadwick, welcome to Creative Conversations. Hi guys, welcome to another Creative Conversation. I am here with Olivia Bossett. Thank you for joining us That's today. All right. Thank you. Would you like to tell us a bit about what you do? Sure. So I am a photographer, mainly working in content creation for brands around the UK, but also around the world. Um, I specialise in like fashion photography and lifestyle work, um, and I've been doing that for two and a half years full time. Yeah. Um, but I started photography when I was fifteen, so. Long time since I've been using a camera. I uh, studied fashion photography in Falmouth, which is why I live in Falmouth. Yeah. And I finished that degree four years ago. Before we start talking about your photography, can I ask you where you're originally from? Yeah, so I am actually originally from Switzerland, Geneva to be precise. I grew up there and I lived there till I was 18. Yeah. And then I came here for uni and that's how I ended up in the UK. But I'm actually um, half British and half Swiss, so my mum is British, but she's never lived in the UK, so she's always lived in Switzerland, yeah. and then my dad is 100% Swiss, so um, I speak English with my mum yeah. and French with my dad. Oh, wow. That's oh, why funny. I sound yeah. so normal. <laughs> Let's talk about your photography. Mm-hmm. Um, so what kind of style would you say it is? It's very um, natural. Yeah. It's quite romantic, um, quite dreamy in style, but I like to say it's got like an added adventure-ness into it as well, uh, because I like to be outside and like to be outdoors and Mm -hmm. I'm very inspired by landscapes and nature, so that's one of the advantages of living here. And then when I go back home in Switzerland, it's also just as inspiring. So, um, So, yeah. Yeah, do your surroundings then influence that style? Massively. A lot of my work is shot on location in some kind of amazing location. Um, So, you know, like loads of work down at Kynance Cove or over on the beaches on the North Coast or on the Lizard Lizard Peninsula in Cornwall um, or in the mountains. Very inspired by what I've got around me. Yeah. So how do you actually plan for those kind of photo shoots? What kind of things do you have to think about? Um... Mm. (laughs) Depends on the time of year. If it's winter, everyone has to have three layers at least. You know, Mm. we're thinking ski jackets because when you're standing outside for a long time, it's really cold. Making sure we've got blankets to cover the models up. Wet gear, umbrellas, hot flasks with hot tea, food... Um, making sure that I've got multiple cameras on me so that if one of them fails then I've mm. got a backup because you know we could be an hour's drive away from home or anything so just making sure that you've got everything yeah in summer it's a little bit easier I can kind of just rock up somewhere with whatever I've got on me and a camera and not worry too much about it um, but the winter is really where you've got to be 
on it. Yeah, and do you have, are you like constantly looking at the weather forecast? Yeah. <laughs> All the time, like I know what the long range forecast is yeah. constantly. <laughs> and, and what happens if, say, it is, you know, do you actually have to cancel the shoot if the weather is really bad? If it's going to be really, really bad, like we're talking, you know, strong winds and rain, yeah. yeah. We have to push it back because I've actually done a shoot in horrendous weather, like strong gale force winds and driving rain, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. No matter how much you think, oh no, it's fine, we'll just push through, it doesn't work because the whole team gets cold and wet. Yeah. It's dangerous for Kit, um, mm. especially if you've got any lights on set, it's really mm. dangerous. Um, I can't risk my camera getting, you know, wet logged. Yeah. A lot of cameras are watertight these days, but not that watertight. Um, and you can buy things where you can put your, your camera in a water, water casing, but it doesn't work very well, and it's annoying to shoot through. So we just push it back and reschedule. Yeah, that sounds really... Yeah, you have to be on the ball, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So how do you um, find work, and do clients, do they come to you? Mm -hmm. um, it'd be interesting to hear. I either receive an email from someone who needs some workshop for them, and they've found my website through... Pinterest or Google or Instagram or they've been referred to me through someone else and they've approached me or I do a lot of pitching so I yeah. will send an email to the marketing director at a brand or the social media person at a brand and sort of introduce myself and say that I'm a photographer, I live in Cornwall, um, your brand and me are quite a good fit I think um, and I'll either sometimes offer them to start with, to kind of get the ball rolling, maybe a free shoot, just to, yeah. to, to, so they can see how I work and what I can do. Um, and then from there, I get offered work from them, and that's that's worked really well for me in the past. Yeah, that sounds really good. So you try and kind of build those relationships yeah. in a quite a natural way as well. Yeah. Um, and gradually, I guess, if they see what, if they like what you do, yeah. they'll come back and... Exactly. It's about offering value. Yeah. So thinking about what it is that these people really need and how I can offer that to them. Yeah. So I know that these brands, they need so much imagery, like more than ever before. So to have a photographer who lives in a beautiful area coming and saying, I want to work with you, I want to help you, Yeah. it's kind of a good thing no that <laughs> is really good it's good as well that you know what your value is mm. yes yeah, well it's taken a long time <laughs> it's a lot of thinking like what am I doing <laughs> and then it and one day it just clicks you know like okay I know now what yeah. it is that I have and what yeah. I can give people and it's just be, remaining really clear on what that is you not only f you know do photograph shoots you also write your blog mm -hmm. And you also do a podcast. Yeah. Um, so you have a lot of content that you produce that I think all of it is value yeah. to someone who wants to learn and someone who wants to understand photography more. Yeah. So what made you start, you know, producing that amount of content? Um, it's a good question. But my blog first started because I wanted an outlet for yeah. myself. It wasn't even about business. Originally, it started because I was writing about food, which is <laughs> not at all the case anymore. But the more I went on, the more I started reading up about how other people were, were sort of attracting their clients to them. And, and content marketing was such a big part of that. So I began doing it myself. And I really enjoy making content. Yeah. Like, I'm a, I'm a naturally creative person. That's kind of in me. I have to make stuff. So when I'm not making photos, I'm very inclined to want to write a blog post yeah. or make... Because the whole process of writing a blog post is very creative. I have to think of images that are going to go with it. I have to make graphics. I have to write the post. Then I have to share it on social media. Yeah. And, and sharing on social media is also really creative. So it's all kind of wrapped into one of... It's half me being selfish and just wanting to make <laughs> stuff and half very conscious content marketing, which... Because all this stuff I write is for people who I want to have work for me, or work with me, sorry. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to attract them to my blog and to therefore they'll see my services and maybe think, oh, she knows her stuff, yeah. I want to work with this person. So that's that's the idea behind all the, the how, blogs. What I want to know is, um, how do you manage all your content? How do you actually... Because you always have something on your blog post what, once a week, yeah. and then you've got your podcast which I think, again, is very regular. Yeah. You know, how do you manage all that content? I'm... <laughs> the Swiss in me comes out. I'm super, <laughs> like, anally organised. Yeah. And I always have been since I was 
a teenager, you know, yeah. I was that girl at school who'd done her homework a week before it was due, really geeky. So I just like being organized and I know that I like to have a, I have to have a blog post out every Monday. Yeah. So in order to do that, I need to write it a week beforehand. So I just know that once a week I have to sit down. I've gotten good at it now. It doesn't take me that long to write them. So once I've got an idea, from idea to end and having it scheduled and ready to publish, it might take me only an hour and a half yeah. max. So it's, it's a lot of practice and that helps me get going. The podcast has been a new thing. So that's been a lot of a longer process especially because I did a first season of interviews and a second season of yeah. solo shows and I've had to learn how but all about like audio and then how to get them up there so but again it's the same thing like knowing okay I've got a week where I have to have a podcast out every week yeah sometimes I batch record them so I'll sit down on a free day and I'll record five episodes especially for the solo shows and then I schedule them all and I don't have to think about it yeah and then it's just done I prefer to write what I'm feeling yeah. like writing about at that time. So what I have got is I've got a massive ideas list on uh, a yeah. Trello yeah. Like website. So I've just got a collection of hundreds of ideas. And when I need to write a blog post, I'll open that up and scan it. And I'll just pick a topic that I feel like writing about that day. Yeah. It changes regularly, like week on week. One week I'll feel like writing about marketing. Another week I'll feel about like I want to write about my lifestyle so I just change it up whatever I feel like writing I write about what keeps yourself fresh and motivated what keeps you going in your work it's a good question I think I spend a lot of time tuning into what is inspiring me so if I'm having a bit of a creative block Mm. I will take a step back and maybe I'm working too much or trying too hard to drum up business or something like that so if I need to create something for myself it's getting outside going somewhere new somewhere that I'm inspired by because as I mentioned I'm super inspired by the natural world it's not so much I don't really have concepts a lot of people like very art people come up with concepts and I'm not very good at that so I just kind of go somewhere and I get an idea in my head and once I have an idea I can then go on Pinterest and start putting a mood board together and getting further inspiration, maybe looking at what dresses I want to photograph or what clothes I need. And it kind of builds from there. Mm. And that's how I kind of find my inspiration. In terms of motivation, just knowing that if I don't do it, no one else is going to do it. Yeah. And I read a lot. I read a lot of books. Uh, and so reading all those books kind of gets me inspired and ready to go so motivation isn't too much of a problem but I can see how it could be yeah at times so I try to remember that for when I have a day where I'm like I just really don't want to do any work today (laughs) (laughs) now do you also work with a lot of collaborators like other people who are similar to yourself yeah um and how does that happen So I tend to work with makeup artists and hairstylists, clothing stylists, Mm. set designers sometimes, set stylists. Um, I need those people because I haven't got those skills. I am very much a picture taker. Uh, I can do a bit of styling and I can sort of do a bit of makeup, but I'm not very good at it. And I've found that when I have someone on set who can focus on their expertise it leaves me it frees me frees me up to do mine to focus on what I'm good at so in terms of finding them just look around on Instagram and look at who maybe a photographer I admire who's who they've worked with and I get in touch with the person the makeup artist who was on their set with them and that's how I find people that's cool. And though, do you do a lot of that locally as well? Yeah, yeah. Around Cornwall? Yeah, I've got a makeup artist I work with and she's also a hairstylist that I work with regularly, Ioni. Um, she's amazing. And I found her very early on, actually, and we've become really good friends. Yeah. Which makes it really nice because it feels like it's just a big group of friends on set, which yeah. is lovely. I think that makes such a difference, isn't it? Yeah. And also that it shows that you're part of a team, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, um... Advice. I'd love to hear some advice. Yeah. I know you've been given a lot of advice actually as we've been going and yeah. that's been really good. Um, but what about for someone who is, say, starting out in photography? Yeah. What advice will you give them? Um, 
The main thing I would say to someone starting out is to practice all the time. When I first started, I was using a camera every day. Even if it's just to go out and photograph a plant, you need to know the in and out of your camera, like, without a doubt. You need to know how it works. You need to know what your style is, so experiment with different types of styles at first. It took me a long time to know exactly what it is that I liked shooting. So by trying all different styles, you'll eventually know what you gravitate towards most, mm. and then you can, from that point, carry on to build on that style. So practice, practice, practice. Like yeah. It's literally like, it's, I know it's so cliche because you hear it all the time, but if you don't practice loads, you can't progress. Yeah. So just like shoot, if not every day, every other day. And do you think um, like people who are starting out need to have a website to put the images on, or do you think something like Instagram would be a good, um, good enough for that? I think if you don't want a website to start off with, if you're not willing to sort of spend the money on it, because you can do free ones, but if you want a nice one, you need to spend some money on it. Instagram is fine. I think that if you want to start booking clients, if you've got to a point where you're like, right, this is no longer just a hobby, I want to start booking either family shoots or portrait shoots or I want to start working with brands, you need a website mm. because otherwise they're going to look at you and it just it looks more professional if you have a website that's yeah. all set up. Where would you like to be in one year's time and five years' time? That's such a hard question. Um, in one year's time, I think I would like to be doing a lot of the same sort of stuff I'm doing right now more frequently. Mm. And I would really like to travel a little bit more. Um, if I could book a job abroad, that would be really cool. <laughs> I'd love to work a bit more in Switzerland as well. I'm finding yeah. that um, I've lived in the UK for eight years. I'm starting to feel a little bit more homesick than I used to, which is a strange and interesting thing to experience. So I think if I can start thinking of ways I can book a little bit more work back in Switzerland, it will give me an opportunity yeah. to, to go home a little bit more. Uh, and in five years' time, I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. I, I'm very much someone who listens to her, how I'm feeling at the moment and I go with what feels good at the time. Mm. So I don't even know what I'll be doing, you know. And we don't know what the internet will be like at that point because so much of my career is focused on how yeah. social media works and how the internet works for brands. Yeah. So if Instagram is even still a thing in five <laughs> years' time... It's amazing, isn't it, to think that, you know, technology could change yeah. so much, couldn't yeah. it? Well, just think about five years ago. Yeah. It wasn't such a big thing. Yeah. I mean, I wrote my dissertation at university about the way the internet has changed the fashion industry, and that was four years ago. Wow. And Instagram was so new, blogs were still so new, and it's just in the last four years gone... <laughs> <laughs> Exploded, so, doesn't who it? knows what will be in five years yeah. time so hopefully just... still creative and... oh yeah yeah 100% I yeah. can't not be I'll still be taking pictures I'll still yeah. be making stuff so finally Olivia what advice would you give to your younger self um I would say don't worry too much about what other people think and to not give up to listen to my intuition um, and to just go with what feels good and what feels creative and interesting. Brilliant. So don't give up yeah. and just go with what you think yeah. you should be doing creatively. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Olivia, for spending time and sharing so much with us. Um, guys, don't forget to go and follow um, Olivia over on all of her links below. So Instagram and have a look at her website and read all of the blogs that she's got. She's got so many posts that are helpful on all sorts of stuff as well as photography. Um, so I will see you again, guys, for another creative conversation. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Too much noise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna look forward to seeing the I know. jumping. You, you saw him. He was like, yeah, yeah. Jup, 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 jup. I'm gonna go and get that shoe. <laughs> <laughs> He's too clever. He is. Um, that's enough. No.
So any work I've done with brands like Jules or Crew Clothing, I went to them. So I pitched them, I find out who I need to contact, who's in the marketing department there or in the social media team. And I send them an email and just yeah. say, hi, I'm a photographer. I'd love to work with you. Here's what I do. He's <laughs> not this bad normally. Oh my God. You're gonna see this. Yeah, it's just, woo! <laughs> Booba reel. Milo, Milo. I might give him something to chew on. <laughs> that was good though. It was good. Until <laughs> well, it wasn't. Looking out the window. This was Creative Conversations, and I'm Mel Chadwick.